SAS on, full throttle. Try to get the most out of my solids by reducing some of the liquid. Take down this two thirds. And the solids are getting ready to burn out. Full liquid fuel. I won't pitch over until I get rid of these because they kind of mix between my other columns. Now that they're safely jettisoned, I'll move over a couple degrees. Push my prograde over. I was increasing my time to apoapsis, but then I pitched over and it decreased, so now I'm picking up speed again. When it gets to about 45 seconds to apoapsis, I'll head for the 45 degrees. And my apoapsis, apoapsis height is rising pretty steadily. Getting ready to get rid of these dual nozzles. Wildcats. I wasn't sure how I, I built this before I launched it by a couple of hours, so I wasn't sure exactly what I was using. But I'm low enough in the atmosphere that it's nice to have these wildcats. And they're more powerful than necessary. They've actually launched me way above the height that I wanted to be at. So the atmosphere will drag me down from 71, but I also have more than a minute to my apoapsis, but my horizontal speed is very low. So even though I'm wanting to slow down some, I also need to push my prograde to the horizon, so I'll aim down just a little. I have way too much fuel in here, but I still need enough horizontal velocity that I will be able to jettison these and recover them in the atmosphere. Okay, let's speed this up. I kind of want to be on a lower orbit compared to the rescue pods so I can have an easier time since I'll be moving faster to rendezvous with one of them. Let's go back up. So I'm still still high enough that I'm not too worried about the fact that I'm past my periapsis. I'll just have to go another uh, 290 or so meters a second. Although I guess I should be worried because it is gonna pull me back into the atmosphere, but. It's nothing too bad, although I will have less Delta V than I planned. If I was paying attention when I launched the Wildcats, I could have preserved a lot more of the uh, horizontal speed earlier on. But this might still be enough to rescue both of the other crew members. Okay, it's up to 60.
Because if I just had a circular orbit in the side, it would be a lot easier to just move my initial point around without having to worry about just where they were. So I'm just going to change my view here to target. As I get closer to them, my relative speed is decreasing. And when I get close enough to where they are, I'm going to zero it out. After I set the relative speed to my target to zero, I will then aim for them and just accelerate a little bit. We'll burn off 67 meters a second. Okay, and then this is the target marker. So since I was only going to be about 7 away, I'll probably just go up to 20 to make it a little faster. And then I'm about 9,000 away. You can see it here, that's why I have that there. And then I'm going to be getting closer. Now that I've change the orbit to be a little closer to that and I'm still on the inside so I've been speeding up slightly more than they have and then it's just a game of, of doing this a couple times until you are close enough that you're comfortable sending your Kerbal through space you have to be within 2.5 kilometers and I've done a, a space mission of 2.5, 2.4 kilometers, and it's a little unnerving because there's a, a higher level of uncertainty when it comes to being able to interpret the relative orbits based on the perspective of the camera just behind the Kerbal. Yeah, but we're 2,700 away. You can see they're getting ready to cross up front on my uh, center of my screen. 361. Okay, now I'm actually speeding away from them. So now I'm 406 meters away. I'll get just a little bit closer. I'll go for just under 7. This is a, an audio track that I haven't heard before. Sounds like it's good for cartoon troop movements or something. It kind of fits the Kerbal environment though. 250 meters away. I'm, I'm basically just going to make this dead easy to transfer them over. I don't want to collide with them though because they might bounce off and That would be just a little annoying. 70 meters away. Under a meter a second difference. Now I can just hit a bracket to the right. I wish it was lighter. I can... Our relative speed is 
so close that I'm just going to time warp into a lighter area so that you guys can see. And it's a hundred away, so there's a little bit of drift, but you can see it's over there. I don't know which one of these, or which two of those, are actually empty. But let's move forward, off to the side, up a little. This is looking good. Pull back, move up. Left, move up, move forward. And if you're unfamiliar with flying around in the EVA, you do not want to point at your target and then just keep maneuvering to try and just, it's not like a race car, you can't just aim right for it and keep going. Because you just want to adjust your velocity so that you'll increase towards it. You don't want to keep pushing it. Otherwise it'll also be hard to tell how things are changing. Let's see if this top is, is occupied. And it is not. One down, one to go. And now he's behind me. So that I'm just going to decrease my orbit down quite a lot. I'm just going to circularize it to uh, 70. Or maybe 75, just to be safe. Okay, 75 in the periapsis. Let's lower the apoapsis. It's already fairly close. I mean, it's off by less than a quarter of a, the orbit. Okay. Now I'm just going to add a maneuver that extends my orbit out to meet his orbit. And we'll see if anywhere in my current will align to add up and it's not going to but I can see that it's it's actually getting further and further away so let's add an orbit and unless we want to increase our orbit and slow down, we'll have to orbit around so that our encounter works its way counterclockwise. So one more orbit is too much. We'll decrease that by just a little. And 18.9 kilometers. Let's do five. That's actually more, but I'm not going to worry about it. And that's in four hours and 27 minutes. Do another 20 seconds because it's only a three second burn. Pause.
closet so that I can adjust my direction to face the maneuver node because it does shift as you rotate your space when you time warp. Two hours. And if you don't use Kerbal Alarm for things like this, it can be a good idea because if you overshoot something by even a couple minutes, it can cost you hundreds of Delta V when you're able to make large scale changes from a focal point far away from the target that you're going towards. So you can see that shift at uh, 90 degrees. Okay. Now we're just gonna go catch up to him. And then when I'm done with this, I go to the space center and I destroy these because I don't see a need to keep them around. And if I have to rescue more Kerbals, it's annoying to have to look to see what their names were. And I wish there was a... I might have to set up another hotkey to do this, because I find that when I have to start, stop, and start, and stop, I really like to have... Like right now I'm using my right hand, it's off of the mouse, and on the X key, so I can... Kill the velocity, except for I hit the C key. How far away are we? 20,000? That's quite far. So I will go towards them pretty fast and get ready to kill more than 70. Okay, almost there. Now we're 7,700 meters apart. So I'll probably go about 25, just because I'm getting sort of impatient and I have more than 300, or now just under 300 meters a second of delta V. So I'm just going to keep an eye on my distance as I slowly increase the time warp and be ready to decrease the relative speed. It's nice when it shows me these markers on the map when we're getting ready to cross. I wish that there was a greater variance for when it would show that, because if you noticed in the earlier mission, not the earlier mission, but the last person that I rescued, it wasn't showing up for the last few maneuvers because I was close but not close enough for it to register that or enough to show the markers. So we're close enough that we can transfer over if we wanted to. And this may be the last one. We'll see how close we are before we start drifting apart. It looks pretty aligned. But after this orange set of markers, we'll be drifting apart. 190. And we're in the light side of Kerbin, which is excellent. 
start slowing down. 80 meters. Now he just has to find which one of the empty pods is ready for him. I'm not sure if there's a way of knowing which one it is. Bargain. I wonder if there's a way of knowing what jobs they have. I would like... I don't need another pilot, I guess. But I would like another scientist and engineer. I'm also not sure if there are... I guess there probably are assigned pods. I wasn't sure if I just got lucky picking one of the open two last time. I keep thinking that space will also move me up. Oh, slow down. Back up. Let's go for this one. Okay, now how do I want to do this? Let's go around clockwise, I guess. That was less painful than I imagined. Well, we're up here. Science. Now, I don't know if I positioned this in a way that it... Okay, so it does get out. And I believe the last time I used one of these, it was to get the science from Sauna, so I can get two science for doing it in orbit here. And we'll toggle it to retract it because it's ridiculously long. And this telescope actually you can't see it from it opens up when you log the science. It's a neat little animation, it's got a shutter. Nice iris shutter. Now I have, you might notice that I have parachutes on this. I will decelerate for a landing on the light side of Kerbin. But I also figured that why leave this stage in space if I know that I'm going to be coming back. Changes to orbit. Periapsis under thirty five thousand. And I also know that it will burn up in the atmosphere if it's going over 2,000 meters a second. So when I get closer to 70, I may forcefully slow it down a little more before I jettison it. I mean, it's probably only worth like 1,400, but I mean, I have less than... 300,000. Can't really afford to keep wasting everything. And I am accelerating.
Now I may carry this into orbit a little just because I I can save it by using all of this torque on the top to point the engine into the heat. I was thinking if I could get under 2,000 meters a second up in space I may just jettison it and speed through this because none of my none of my top parts are at risk of heating up. I can also get more I think I I can't remember I usually use, I used a scientist for the first couple of missions that I did to test this I think this might only have one use unless you're a scientist and Bob is only level zero so and that was an upper atmosphere temperature I have I'll see if I can snag one or two more of those just for a couple science points that they'll give me and here comes the burn So I could jettison it now. I don't imagine that we would collide. But sometimes sometimes strange things happen in Kerbal Space Program. I'm gonna wait until the fireball dissipates and then I'll jettison it. Pin going. Yeah. Throw it away, nice and far. And then log the temperature here. Keep it for 2.8. I may be landing in some mountainous terrain. Gonna have every other one of these parachutes open up immediately. Everyone is so happy. Aldbro, that's an interesting name. Erolin. And Nedlorf. My actual altitude is 2500, so yeah, that's almost a thousand. It exploded? Stage recovery! No! Stage recovery waits until there, I think... It says, I think, two and a half kilometers away. I guess I hadn't considered that. I got bargain. Rescued bargain. Rescued Tegela. Save Tegela. Orbit complete, orbit complete, orbit complete. At least I recovered these earlier stages. Ferry two tourists to the destinations. 
and time to just speed through this. You can see that the three of my parachutes haven't opened. Now that I think about it, they may... Okay, there they go. I was going to say I was worried about my speed for a little while because I don't have any engines to adjust the speed on. It's a nice scenic balloon ride through the highlands. And everyone returns home safely. Now is there an open one of these there is. So I'll keep the data at the Highlands. I'll have Jeb do a quick report. I guess I've been to the Highlands. And I still can't do surface samples. So we'll recover that. That's it for this side segment of episode 5.1 for New Horizons. If you enjoyed it, uh, you can leave a like and let me know. If there's something that you would like to see me do or comment on or describe why I'm doing something in a certain way or how I would approach something, you can let me know in the comments and I can make an episode or a segment about it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.